Good afternoon, Algebra 2 Trick Honors class. So earlier today, so we talked about the way to sketch the graph for the exponential functions and the logarithmic functions, and also finding the domain, the range. And also for the previous video, I talked about the difference of log and uh, natural log. And now, what about for finding, solving the variable? So for the exponential equations, so as you guys can see that, the base to the power, the base to the power, with another base to the power. How do we isolate the variable if things are getting so complicated? Well, the thing is that we need to find out the common base. So the key step for doing this, or the key base. So anytime that you want to come up with the combination, always make sure that they share with the same base. So now let's do some analysis for number 18 here. So we do have 9 to the power of negative 2m minus 3 times 81 to the power of n plus 3. So the whole thing, that equals 1 third. So one thing we know is that 9 can be written as 3 squared. So for 9 to the power of negative 2m minus 3 can be written as 3 squared to the power of negative 2m minus 3. And then for 81 too, also this one can be written with the base 3. We do know that 3 to the third power, that's 27. So 81 is consist, is consist with what? 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 multiplied by 3 4 consecutive times. So it's 3 to the fourth power and then to the power of n plus 3. And then on the right hand side here, so this one 1 third. Well, 1 third, basically this one can be written as 3 to the negative, 3 to the power of negative 1. So 3 to the power of negative 1. So one thing we notice, power to the power, we multiply the exponent. So 3 to the power, power to the power, distribute that 2 right here. So we got negative 2m, no, negative 4m. Okay, so got to be careful. So negative 4m, uh, 2 times negative 3, so that's negative 6. And then times 3 to the power of 4m plus 12. Again, so what I'm doing here, I just want to distribute the power. So power, power, you multiply those exponents. And the right-hand side is to, which you want to keep that 3 to the power of negative 1. So again, same base with different exponents. So back to the properties of exponent, things that we talked about before. It's a product to sum. So we combine those exponents. So negative 4m plus 4m, well, that one is considered 0. And then, what else? Negative 6 plus 12, then that'll be 6. But on the other side here, that's 3 to the power of negative 1. 3 to the power of 6, obviously it's not the same as 3 to the power of negative 1. Guess what happened? No solution. So anytime that you find out something weird, or the constant, the variable got canceled, and the number on both sides are not equal, so that means no solution. Okay, so that means no solution. What about if that's the same number on both sides? So that means the variable could be infinitely many solution. Okay, so if you guys just check the solution here down the bottom of the page. So for number 18. Well, I should provide the other solution here. Well, this one should be right. It's no solution. So now let's find the one that we do have a solution. So now number 20 right here. So 1 4 to the power of 3 r, so this one is written as 4 to the power of negative 1, and then to the power of 3 r. And then 64 can be written as 4 to the third power, 4 q, and then to the power of negative 2 r, just rewrite those exponent. And then 16 can be written as 4 square. Again, power of power, so we multiply the exponent, so 4 to the power of negative 3 r times 4 to the power of negative 6 r. So that equals 4 squared. And then combine those exponents. So we do have 4 to the power of negative 9r. So that equals 4 squared. So now anytime that you end up with one single base with the power, one singular base to the power, so that means the common base, we can cancel them out. And what's left? It's 9r equals 2. And then how do you solve for r? Divided by negative 9 on both sides. So that means r equals negative 2 over 9. Okay. So the way to check your work, you can always plug in a number back to the original form and then find out exactly 
you know what the final solution is so once you plug in a number try to evaluate it eventually it's going to be 16. now let's try another one so we do have 10 to the power of m minus 2 minus 7 equals 29. so we do have 10 to the power of m minus 2 so first thing that you want to do you want to get rid of the constant so s7 on both sides so 29 plus 7 which is what 36 and now for those you might be wondering how do we isolate that variable so one thing that we notice, so this one is considered the exponential form. Guess what? We can always convert the exponential form to the logarithmic form. Okay, let's talk about the general structure, the way to convert it. So let's say that we do have y equals a to the power of x. So let's say that you want to convert it back to the, uh, the log form. Well, instead of using a, let's use b. b is the base. So log base b and then of y equals x again so b is the base x which is the exponent and then y is always the result so what i did here i still keep the base block base b but now for the result and the exponent so basically what i did here i just swapped them again those two functions here they're considered the inverses of each other okay so the way to convert this one, so we take log base 10 of 36. So that equals m minus 2. Because that the whole quantity here, that's considered the exponent. And now, how do you isolate that m? Add 2 on both sides. So that means m equals log base 10 of 36 plus 2. And for those you might be wondering what log base 10 of 36 is, we'll talk about another property for the next part of the video. It's all about the properties of logarithm. Okay, so the ice cream truck just came by. Okay, so now 24. Okay, so as you can see that, it's a base E. So one thing that we notice, we can convert it back to the natural log form. So now, first thing that you want to do, you want to add 5 on both sides because you want to isolate that the exponential form. So add 5 on both sides, so we do have negative 85. And then divide it by negative 10. Before you convert it, make sure that you need to isolate the base. Divide it, so we do have 8.5. So we do have e to the power of 7n plus 1 equals 8.5. And now, what can you do after this? Well, we do know that's a base e. We can always convert it back to the natural log form. So take the natural log on both sides. So one thing we notice, natural log of e, it's always 1. So the property that we talked about for the previous video. Okay, so this one got canceled. So what's left here, it's 7n plus 1. So that equals natural log of 8.5. And then isolate the variable. So subtract 1 both sides. So natural log of 8.5 minus 1. And then eventually divided by 7. Now again, we don't know exactly what that is unless you do that on the calculator. So the one that I'm showing you right now, this one is the simplest form. The way to solve for the variable. Okay, so you try to find out what that is. So basically using a scientific calculator, plug in natural log of 8.5 minus 1, and then the result divided by 7. And now what about for 26? Quite similar. So this one, again, whatever the number that is not related with the base, so make sure that you need to find a way to cancel out those numbers first. So S6, both sides. So we do have 10 times. 9 to the power of 1 minus 10x, so that equals 26. And then divided by 10, both sides. So we do have 9 to the power of 1 minus 10x, so that equals 2.6. And then basically this one, we can take the uh, we can convert it to log, the log form. So we do have log base 9 of 2.6. So that equals 1 minus 10 to the power of x. Uh, just 10 times x. 
Excuse me. And then for the rest of this, subtract 1 on both sides. So log base 9 of 2.6 minus 1, so that equals negative 10x. And then eventually divided by negative 10. So it's written as log base 9 of 2.6 minus 1. It's all over negative 10. Again, it's not a nice number. So you try to do that on a calculator, it's going to be considered an irrational number. Okay, so the way to solve for the variable with the exponential form and the log form. Got to be careful with which log that you want to apply here. So LOG, and then the other one is a natural log. Now, finding the inverses. Again, the way to find the inverses, we want to rewrite that f of x, h of x, in terms of y, right? Well, this one is already written in terms of x and y. So now, the key step for doing this, it's all about switching the variable. So x equals 2 times log base y to the power, well, the base is 10, actually. So it's the quantity of y to the power of 5 minus 4. Again, if the base is not shown, it's always 10. And now, the rest of this, you want to solve for y in terms of x. So f4 on both sides. So we do have x plus 4 equals 2 log base 10 of y to the power of 5. And now, how do you isolate the variable? So the things that can divide it by 2 first. So x plus 4 over 2. So that equals log base 10 of the quantity y to the 5th power. And now for those you might be wondering, we got log base 10. How do we get rid of that log base 10? Keep that in mind, we can always convert that log form to the exponential form. So the base here is what? 10. And what's the power? This whole quantity here. And then what is that equal to? y to the power of 5. And then last but not least, how to get rid of that fifth power? So we multiply the power by its reciprocal. So multiply the power by its reciprocal, 1 fifth. 1 fifth. So eventually the inverse, inverse of f of x, is considered 10 times 10 to the power of x plus 4 all over 10. And that would be the inverse. Okay, so now what about for 30? So pretty similar, so swap the variable. And then from here, a lot of people are just getting stuck. So what should I do? Log base 10. Again, if this one is written as a log form, you can always convert it back to the exponential form. Base is 10. Power, which is what? X. Result. The quantity, negative y to the power of 4, plus 1. Subtract 1 both sides. So 10 to the power of x minus 1. So that equals negative 2 times y to the power of 4. And then divided by negative 2. So 10 to the power of x minus 1 all over negative 2. So that equals y to the power of 4. Again, the power, how to give the power? People are saying that, take the four, uh, it's the fourth root. So we just want to raise up to the power of 4. So raise up the whole base to the power of 4. Because 1, 4 times 4, that's 1. So inverse of f of x. So that equals 10 to the power of x minus 1 all over negative 2, the whole quantity, to the power of 4. So the way to find the inverses compared to the way that we did it before, so it's pretty much the same process. But the things that the structure might be a little bit difficult. So what about the way to find the inverse for the natural log function? Similar. Swap the variable. And then after you swap the variable, so you want to isolate that y by itself. So divided by negative 5 both sides. So we do have x to the power of negative 5 over, well, equals, natural log of the quantity, 2 times 3 to the power of y. And now from here, we can convert it back to the exponential form. So take the base e on both sides. 
So we do have e to the power of x to the power x over negative 5. So that equals 2 times 3 to the power of y. Again, the property we talked about before, e to the natural log, it's also 1. Same as natural log of e, it's 1. But natural log of 1, it's always what? 0. Again, properties that you need to recognize. It's very important. And then this one here divided by 2, both sides. So we do have e to the power of x over negative 5. And then the whole quantity divided by 2. So that equals 3 to the power of y. But again, this one is not good enough. So it looks like we're getting back to the exponential form. And as you can see that, the base is what? 3. So it looks like we can convert this one back to the, the logarithmic form. So log base 3. Uh, here's the exponent, the whole quantity here. Again, that one is negative 5. So, and so log base b of the quantity, e to the power of x over negative 5, divided by 2. So that equals y, which is the what? Inverse of f of x. And for those you might be wondering, can I simplify this a little bit further? I mean, for the uh, for the two here, you can stay that one half right in front of that natural, uh, right in front of the the e. So another way you can stay this is log base three of the quantity one half e to the power of x over negative five, like that. Okay. So now let's do another one here. It's a lot of practice, so it's getting more difficult and difficult. Okay, so for number 34, so we got y equals 4 natural log of x minus 9, the quantity, and then outside minus 2. So again, swap the variable. And then add 2 on both sides, because we want to isolate that natural log of y minus 9. Divided by 4 both sides. And then we end up with x plus 2 over 4. So that equals natural log of y minus 9. And now natural log, how to get rid of that natural log? So we take the base e both sides. So base e to the power of x plus 2 over 4. So that equals y minus 9. And then last but not least, add 9 on both sides. So that equals y, which is what? Inverse of f of x. So you've got to be very careful with all the work, all the detail that you're showing. If you miss one little step here, so that means everything else is going to be collapsed. So you've got to be very careful, very cautious, the way that you solve for the inverse. Now, what happens once we deal with something that's kind of complicated with the exponential model? Again, the way to find the inverse, same process. Again, the key step. It's all about switching x and y. So once we swap the variable, we can just solve for y in terms of x. So x, so that equals e to the power of y plus 9 over negative 2, the whole quantity, to the power of 1 fourth. And for those who might be wondering, how do we get rid of the power? So going back to the previous chapter, the, ra uh, the radical function. So the way to get rid of the power, so we multiply its reciprocals of the power. So this one we multiply by 4 on both sides. So we do have x to the power of 4. So that equals e to the power of y plus 9 over negative 2. And then this one you can cross multiply or cross... Yeah, just cross multiply this. So we do have negative... 2 times x to the power of 4, and then 1 times the quantity, e to the power of y, plus 9. So negative 2x to the power of 4, so that equals e to the power of y, plus 9. And then solve for y in terms of x. Subtract 9 both sides. And then base e to the power of y, so we can take the natural log on each side here. So natural log of negative 2x to the power of 4 minus 9. So that equals y. Again, natural log of e. What is it? 
We talk about that so many times. It's always what? One. And then therefore, so y is being isolated, but don't forget, it's the inverse of f of x. So again, got to be careful with all the step here. So always try to do one thing at a time. Okay, so 38. So this one's the last one I would like to finish in this video. And then the third part of the lesson, we'll talk about the properties of natural law, na uh, natural law and regular law and the way to apply the properties. Okay, so now 38. So quite similar. So swap the variable. So x equals e to the power of y minus 3 all over negative 4 to the power of 1 fifth. And then try to get rid of the power, multiply both sides, the power by the reciprocal, so raise up to the power of 5, cross cancel. So we do have x to the power of 5 equals e to the power of y minus 3, the whole quantity, over negative 4. And then multiply negative 4 both sides, or you can cross multiply. F3, both sides. And then finally, we take the natural log on each side. So natural log of negative 4x to the power 5 plus 3. So that equals natural log of e to the power y. Again, natural log of e is always 1. So we got y remain. Again, this one, we write it in terms of f of x. Again, inverse. So anytime that you do have any difficulty, any questions, things like that, feel free to put into the comment bar. And I'm more than happy to answer all the questions. So usually I try to reply that within the next 24 hours. So thank you for watching the video today. And make sure that you guys subscribe to the channel and then refer your friends and people that who wants to learn more math. Okay, so see you next time.